Connor McMichael is looking for a bigger role. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked on Caps. So in this edition of Locked on Capitals, we talk about unrestricted free agents with Justin Trudell of Nova Caps. Then later in the show, we will talk about what Bears players are poised for more potentially with the Capitals. And then we will talk about Connor McMichael looking for a bigger role. And that's where we will start today is Connor McMichael kind of just lighting it up. Uh, with the Hershey Bears. And, you know, the one thing I'm going to say about him is his maturity is is really kind of what sets him apart from a lot of the other younger players is that, you know, last season with the Capitals, uh, he was on the team and was a healthy scratch for a good chunk of the time that he was there. Uh, didn't ultimately find a role, so he got sent down to Hershey. And instead of sulking, he made the most of his opportunity, and he has continued to do so through the Calder Cup playoffs. So, a lot of people have said that, you know, it was Peter Laviolette, his reluctance to play younger players. Uh, it was also said before about Barry Trotz, this reluctance to play young players. And one of the things that's been said about Lavi, I'll just talk about that briefly, is it's not their mission to integrate young players. Their job is to squeeze the most juice that they possibly can out of the 2018 lineup, you know, with a couple other pieces added in there. Um, when Lavi came here, they weren't saying, you know, your job is to make sure that you can get as many Hershey Bears players as you possibly can into the lineup. Uh, that's just wasn't the case. There was a mandate to try to get another cup uh, under this Alex Ovechkin rock the red era. So now that we've moved on to a new head coach in Spencer Carberry, a head coach that is familiar with Connor McMichael, along with a lot of the other players down uh, in Hershey and with the Carolina Stingrays there, there is, you know, a potentially ostensibly going to be a good chance that you might see a bigger role for Connor McMichael. I think that you know, what has changed on the Caps uh, mindset is, you know, it, with a different head coach, they saw what they got with Peter Laviolette. You know, this mandate to just win another Stanley Cup, that was it. You know, that's what they want to do. It doesn't matter if they integrate any of the young players in there. One of the things that Brian McClellan had spoke about on the breakdown day uh, after the season was that he said that this next head coach, he wants to be one that can work with the young players and the old players. So there's been a, a, a change uh, in the mindset of the Capitals. Ultimately, they want to integrate these young players so they can get younger and faster and compete with some of the NHL's best. So I do think that next season will be a really great opportunity for Connor McMichael as he continues to just do so well down in Hershey. It couldn't have happened to a better guy, Connor McMichael said, of Carberry becoming the Caps' newest bench boss. He's a really hard-working guy. Carberry left the Caps organization in 2021 to be an assistant for the Maple Leafs, as we remember. And that's ultimately, you know, to work on his game. Some people have faulted him for leaving the Caps organization uh, for being an assistant coach. That was just all stepping stones for him. I applaud him for doing that as he has found his way back to the Capitals organization here. My job coming in here, we have a high highly motivated group of veteran players, leadership group, and we also have a group of players that it's my job to bring along into that group, including young players like you referred to. So that to me is exciting, Carberry explained. And, you know, he was the head coach of the Stingrays. He was the head coach uh, of the Hershey Bears. He was also a coach with the Providence Bruins. Um, so he does have a lot of experience recently with being a head coach or an assistant head coach of young players. So I think that that bodes well for him. And I think that that is an exciting proposition for the young guys, you know, potentially Connor McMichael, Hendricks LaPierre, Ethan Frank, Vinny Iario. You have young players that are hungry to prove that they're capable of NHL uh, 
uh, players and you've got a group of veteran players that feel like they got a bit of a chip on their shoulder and they're ready to prove something that we're still a very strong team in the NHL, he added. So the experience in that, in the lower leagues and dealing with a lot of that in the mix, that's what I'm trying to bring together and make sure that we have a compete at a real high level. So you're mixing in uh, veterans, your Alex Ovechkin, your TJ Oshie, Nick Baxter, John Carlson, and then hopefully peppering in some of the younger players. You could include Beck Malenstein into that equation. Um, you know, uh, Lucas Johansson potentially is going to see what he has in camp. Um, and uh, like I talked about McMichael and LaPierre. So it is going to be the cream of the crop that is going to get their opportunity from Hershey on the big team. They're not going to just integrate players just to integrate players. They're going to have to be ready uh, for their big opportunity if they're going to, you know, have an opportunity on the big team because we don't want young guys, young guys on the team just for the, you know, having you know a, a bunch of rookies on the team just for rookie's sake i'm excited to hopefully get the chance to work with him again and have the understanding with each other and the familiarity mcmichael said i'm excited mcmichael had started the 22 23 campaign in dc but saw limited ice time through six games and spent a majority of his time watching the games from the press box like i said as a healthy scratch this piece in the hockey news so i do expect that this next season, you know, barring injury or something else getting derailed, we will get a nice long look at Connor McMichael. I think that he will be on the opening night roster. And for me, that's an exciting thing to think about, to finally prove it, to walk it, to talk it, to not only say I'm ready for the NHL, but to prove it. And I think he's done what he can do down in Hershey. He's been killing it down there all season. He has, you know, put kind of the capitals in the rear view and just kind of been laser focused on the task at hand. And that task at hand is helping the Hershey Bears and working on his game. So I am most excited um, about, you know, the future uh, with, with Connor McMichael, along with a lot of the other younger players. And that's what we'll talk about in the next segment here is what players down in Hershey are poised for their big break. We'll talk about that when Locked On Capitals continues. Today's episode is brought to you by a product I use literally every day, AG1 by Athletic Greens. Maybe you're like me, you want to eat healthy and eat well, but it's always easier said than done. That's no longer the case with AG1. With one delicious scoop of AG1 and a glass of water each day, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It can be very hard and expensive to keep track of multiple different supplements and vitamins, not to mention how hard it can be on your stomach. AG1 costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up on the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and subscribe or follow to Locked On Capitals wherever you find your podcasts and on YouTube as I have a lot of great guests lined up for you guys this summer. I also got you covered when it comes to free agency and the draft. So make sure and subscribe and follow Locked On Capitals today. All right, in this next segment here, we are going to talk about what players down in Hershey um, are going to probably have their big opportunity on the big team next year. In the first segment, I talked about Connor McMichael, but I do not think it's just going to be Connor McMichael. I think that there's going to be a lot of young players vying for spots. Let's face it, there was kind of a mandate by Brian McClellan to finally get younger and get faster. I believe that's ultimately what was behind them hiring Spencer Carberry in the first place. So what, what are some of the players down in Hershey? Who are they? From talking to people in Hershey this week, it sounded like Protus and Beck Malenstein are ready. I do believe that, as we saw. Uh, um, Alexi Protus was on the team for a good chunk of the season. What do we remember about him is he played so well in the season before 
that I don't think he was initially poised to be on the big team, but he played so well, they couldn't afford to set him down. He had kind of a bumpy road, if you will, uh, you know, throughout the season. He didn't exactly nail it, I would say, but I think he played well enough to secure a spot on this roster. The next guy as well should come as no surprise is Beck Malenstein. I see him slotting in on the fourth line, a big physical guy. I love that kind of player. I ultimately do see Beck Malenstein breaking with the big team and being on the fourth line. Another guy that's going to get his opportunity um, is Lucas Johansson. This piece was in The Athletic, and I agree with Tarek's assessment here where he says it's going to be a make-or-break stage uh, for Lucas Johansson. This is a guy we've heard about for the longest time, that he's going to break the team. He's the next great blue liner. He's just never lived up to potential. Next season, I think the Capitals need to be all in on Lucas Johansson or they should look at potentially moving him on, trading him, if you will. Um, like I talked about in the first segment there, Connor McMichael just killing it down in Hershey. I really do believe that he is poised uh, to break with the team next season, and I look for him to be on the, on the team all season long. I think that he's ready. I think he's there. I just think that the Capitals need to commit 100%. They don't need to be wishy-washy with him. I do believe that he is ready. The other player that's listed here is Joe Snively, a guy that makes the most of his opportunities. I do believe uh, that he, you know, if there's a roster, a roster spot available, I think that he deserves one as well. All he does is when he gets called up is nails it every single time he gets uh, called up, he scores a goal. I know the season before he, you know, suffered an injury, but we can't really put that on him. So I am most excited to see Joe Snively uh, as well and see, you know, if there's a roster spot, that's the biggest thing. I've listed quite a few players here. Um, where are they all going to slot in? I think that, you know, it's going to be interesting um, during free agency. I do think there's the potential that some players move out. Some of them we might like, some of them we might not like. But if we want these teams, or excuse me, these players to find a spot on the team, the Capitals, they're going to have to move some players out to put some pieces in. I mean, there's only so many spots available, so many dance partners, if you will. So taking a look at it, too, I think that uh, Vinny Iorio, I think that he could be a call up during the season. Um, if there's an injured cap, I like what you know I saw of him last season on the Capitals, but could probably spend a little bit more time marinating down in Hershey. The same thing goes for Hendrix LaPierre, another guy that's always talked about as going to be ready next year. Nope, next year he's going to be ready. Um, I do believe uh, that he is going to need probably one more year to marinate down in Hershey as he had more of a bumpy ride last season. So we don't want to rush these guys in there. We don't want this team to be young for young sake. We want players that are NHL ready. Uh, there was kind of a mandate put on um, uh, Spencer Carberry to integrate some of these young players, but I think the players that are going to be on the team, I know are going to be the players that are ready, not just, you know, here you go. Here's a bunch of young talent, make it work. That's not a recipe for success either. So I do think um, it's going to be an exciting training camp to see ultimately who gets those spots. As far as the long shot, keep an eye on Ethan Frank, uh, another guy, an interesting player who played really well with Hershey. And then he got his new contract and he slipped. Some people said it was the rookie slump or the rookie wall, you know, that kind of thing that, you know, he's used to playing about half the games that he played this last season. And we kind of saw, you know, his limitations uh, and, you know, uh, you know, potentially the maximum of what he's capable of. So, Ethan Frank is a guy to keep an eye on. If we can get the Ethan Frank at some point that played uh, the way he did during the regular season, uh, sign me up. I, I like his game. He's a really fast skater. We know that for sure. Uh, but if it's the Ethan Frank who's been in the playoffs, then I'm not so sure uh, that he's ready for prime time, if you will. But uh, an exciting thing to think about for sure next season with the Caps as this team finally looks to be getting younger getting faster while also keeping a veteran core because as great as these young players are, you still need Ovechkin. You still need John Carlson. Um, the teams that do really well, it's not just all a young team. If you want to take a look at Vegas, you want to take a look at the Panthers right now. It is a mixture of young and old players. It's not just young players. If you want to take a look at a team that's almost exclusively young, take a look at the Buffalo Sabres. They're also playing golf right now, not playing hockey. So 
it has to be kind of a good mix, you know, a good veteran core with a lot of good rookies. Uh, even if you want to bring this closer to home, take a look at what the Capitals did the season they won the Stanley Cup in 2018. It wasn't all rookies. It wasn't all veterans. It was primarily veterans, I would say. Um, but, um, you know, it's a good, I wouldn't say 50-50 mix. I don't know exactly what the ratio should be, but just having the right players. I think maybe scrubbing the whole thing of a title of you're a veteran and you're a rookie and just you know, kind of wiping that away and just saying, these are the best players for the team, for the team period, regardless if they're rookies, regardless if they're veterans, these are the best players in the Washington Capitals organization playing on the team. And who makes that decision? Brian McClellan, Spencer Carberry, those kind of players, or excuse me, those kind of uh, people in the organization, Brian McClellan, the GM, Spencer Carberry, the head coach, um, it's up to them. You know, there's dialogue that's going to go back and forth between the two of them. Ultimately, it's the GM that makes a lot of those decisions. Uh, but you got to think that Spencer Carberry is going to say, this is working. That's not working. What do you got down in Hershey that's going to help plug this hole? Uh, that kind of thing. It is going to be an exciting season. And what I want from this team more than anything is for them to be competitive. I don't want it to be like this, you know, a laborious thing where it's going to be they're going to be good three, four years from now. I want them to be competitive, which is open to interpretation next season. If they can win a Stanley Cup, great. But my goal for them above and beyond anything else is to make it to the playoffs. This team, this franchise is not used to, um, you know, ending the season when the regular season is over. They're used to playing in postseason hockey, whether it's the first round or whatever the case may be. This team, that is their pedigree of being a playoff team. And that's where I would like to see them playing next year. All right. So coming up after the break, I have Justin Trudell of Nova Caps as we talk about potential unrestricted free agent options and potential trade targets. I'll talk to him coming up after the break. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right, so the next time you need your parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part fits right the first time or your money back. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know if the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop at eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. Time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, so let's take and switch gears here a little bit and talk about UFAs. This was um, a, your piece here in Nova Caps. I was taking a look at it. There are some intriguing names, some free agents. It is kind of not the best free agent there, but uh, one of the first ones, there, Killorn. Um, talk to me a little bit about him and where you think he could potentially fit on this Caps team. Yeah, I think... Uh, if we were in a very different roster construction scenario where we needed a veteran kind of top six player to come in who's a proven winner, Killorn would probably be my top choice, right? But he's you know, he's over 30. He's slowing down. He's going to win a long-term deal. Yeah, I mean, he's an effective player still, but he's probably looking like he's going to get, you know, age like Oshi, I would say. Um, he's a physical player, you know, he's in the tight areas all the time. So to me, like he's a player you need to win in the playoffs or a type of player you need in the playoffs. But for me, it's like the money that you're expecting to pay out McLaurin is going to be too high for a free agent signing. And he's kind of out of that age window that we're looking to add to build a little more speed in the lineup. Um, I think like, ideally you'd probably have him on the second line left wing if you were to sign with the Capitals, but I just don't expect that to happen just because of the age and um, right. just where the capitals are trying to go, which is like the, the point of that piece in my eyes was like, OK, let's evaluate the UFA class, at least in terms of points. Tyler Bertuzzi isn't on this list just because like he had injuries and things like that. But I'll be um, coming up with a post here in the next couple of days that kind of goes into him a bit more in particular, um, because I think that if you're going to make a signing in unrestricted free agency, it's going to be a Bertuzzi just because of like He's got he's scrappy. He performed well in the playoffs for Boston, even though they lost in that seven game series with the Panthers in the first round. Um, 
but overall it's like you were looking at these you know it's a pretty underwhelming class of ufas at least for forwards this year um so it's like ultimately if you're going to improve the top six it's going to be via trades yeah and and trade the trade markets and in this piece here you were just taking a look at some of the ufas and some intriguing names out there <clears throat> excuse me one of the other ones was patrick kane uh, as we know, he went from the Blackhawks to the Rangers. Um, and some people had thought, you know, maybe he was a little bit washed up, but I thought he played pretty well with the New York Rangers, all things considered. Um, I don't know if it really fits the narrative of getting younger, but, you know, I think that people think that this team is just going to get all young players. It's going to be pretty much all of Hershey on the big team, and that's not really a recipe for success either. Uh, do you think Patrick Kane uh, would be a, a viable option on this team, and where do you see him fitting in? I mean... For me, going into this past season, I was like, okay, the Blackhawks are rebuilding. There's a potential that Backstrom could miss the entire year. What a splash move would be to get Patrick Kane in a trade, right? You know, take you over that hump and get another kind of top six score, especially on the right side. Um, so we're looking at that like, yeah, he would be like obviously first or second line right wing for the Capitals. I think the concern with Kane is that he's pretty much 100% all offense at this point. Like his defensive effort is really – kind of below standards. Um, you know, he is pretty much as low as you can go in terms of wins above replacement value defensively. And, you know, in today's NHL, like you can't be all one way or the other. Like you have to have some defensive responsibility, even if you're contributing offensively. And I think like on a team where you already have like Alex Ovechkin, who's pretty close to being 100% all offense, it's like having that balance across two lines now, because I don't think you want to stack Ovechkin and Kane on the same line because of that. Uh, you have two lines now that are going to be victimized defensively. So I think like with that, like plus his age, he has a hip issue too. Like he tried, he tried to downplay it, but you know, he could down, go down the same path as Backstrom uh, with his hip resurfacing surgery. So there's, there's some things there to be concerned about. And I think there's probably a higher chance of Buff that Buffalo kind of swoops in and gets him. They have a bunch of cap space. They want to get over the hump and into the playoffs finally, you know, for the first time in what, like a decade. So I think that's probably where it's going to land for the most part. But I think like Kane would be like an ideal player if we need it again, like younger team need to, you know, get over the hump and bring in a player like Kane that has that Stanley cup pedigree. Uh, so that's like, there's a lot of things here where it's like, yes, this player's good, but does he fit what the caps need right now? And I think that for Kane, it's not really a fit in terms of like a player that can play on both ends of the ice, play in tight situations and not give up goals. So it's just like looking at that, like you in this class, you either get all offense or all defense. And there's not a lot of players that are both ways. I think Bertuzzi is probably the only player I would say is like responsible on both ends and adds that kind of like, of lack of a better term, truculence. Um, so it's, there's, there's some things there where it's like the Caps need to like look at in terms of what do we actually need? Do we need just a guy that scores goals or be a guy that can score goals and also play pretty safe defensively? So there is a, a piece that was out here. I was watching the daily face off um, and uh, Stephen Wino was on there and he made an interesting comment. He said, you know, um, he, he was asking him in here, uh, Severali, Cerval, Frank Cervalli asked him, he said, if, is there any big move that you could see happening on the caps? And I was like, you know, I was waiting, you know, for a Kuznetsov. I was waiting for a Mantha, which really aren't that big of moves if you think about it. But he said, Tom Wilson, um, I'm sure you've you followed this team as well. What were your thoughts when you heard Stephen Wino, who's not just this guy who is, you know, writing a little blog out of his garage. He, you know, has covered the team for years. He works for the Associated Press. Um, uh, this is the first time I've heard uh, of this from someone real notable. You know, I, I, you know, if you listen to, you know, Sammy Silber or you listen to, you know, Tarek El Bashir or any of these insiders, I've never heard anyone come out and mention Tom Wilson as a guy that's analytical and looks at a lot of things. What were your thoughts? Uh, kind of his thought was a trade for William Nylander, which kind of, you know, started to gain traction with RMNB is the first time I heard about that. What were your thoughts on that? I think it's a risky move for sure, because like on ice aside, like he's a guy that you can lean on in the locker room. He shows good leadership skills. He's potentially the next captain of the Capitals. So it's like, do you trade a player like that? I mean, he's 
you know, a unicorn in the NHL he, at this point. Like, he's a pure power forward who can score, who's great defensively, can play in all situations. And then I think the issue for me when you trade a Wilson, especially for a Nylander, is they're both on expiring contracts. So when you're looking at it, like, do you look at Nylander and, be, and feel more confident extending Nylander than you do with Wilson, who says he wants to be here, and then you have McClellan who says, like, we're not going to stop. Like, we're going to do everything we can to extend Wilson and make sure he ends his days as a capital. Uh, so to me, I think it was like, one, it makes sense from the roster management standpoint if we remove all kind of emotions towards players, right? Like, you have a very good player on an expiring contract. You need to get the team better for the future. You know, he would be the player that gets the most in a return in a trade, right? So, like, from a roster construction standpoint, if we remove everything from the intangibles list for Wilson, he's a player, he's effective, he's on an expiring contract, he's going to want a big raise. Okay, that's a trade candidate for a team that's trying to retool, right? But I think for the most part, when you look at, like, the way the Capitals are built, like, Tom Wilson's kind of the identity right now, right? Like, heavy hitting, physical, you know, he can skate, he can score. That's, like, what the Capitals want right, in terms of the roster construction. So to me, it's like, you could go after a Nylander, and I think, like, if you're going to make a trade with Wilson, Nylander would be ideal in terms of, like, the type of player you want back, a highly effective scorer, you know, play on the right side where the Capitals struggle. But I think, like, selling Wilson at this point would probably be pretty risky, I think, just because, like, he's an all-situations player, like I said. Nylander's more of an offensively focused player. Um, He's definitely not bad defensively, but, like, for the most part, he, there's, you know, a few Nylanders around the league in terms of, you know, wingers that can score goals and be effective offensively. But there's pretty much one Tom Wilson. So it's like, unless you're getting a King's Ransom back for him, there's just no shot to me. Uh, and I think that would be one of the moves that kind of bit them in the butt more than anything else. If we even want to take a look back on what's a Philip Forsberg thing, um, th- that would even be, you know, worse than that. Uh, some people, I don't know, you know, and these are people that I respect, you know, like I was reading the hockey news and she was talking about there that if to get a Nylander, you know, maybe you could trade uh, Kuznetsov and Mantha. I don't think that Kuznetsov and Mantha is going to get you a Nylander. Do you think so? Uh, definitely not. I mean, at this point, like, you're probably if you're trading Kuznetsov, either it's because you've gotten another center that you're confident is a top six forward, because like there's no there's no way <laughs> like um, like the trade market for centers is tough. Like the wingers are just a little more easy to acquire for the most part, especially top six wingers. But top six centers that you know have the capability of being elite like Kuznetsov, but also has issues with you know consistent effort on the ice teams that are looking to acquire Kuznetsov or would be interested in maybe acquiring him are going to be like, well, we're not going to pay premium price for him because we know that he's not going to play his hardest every night. So you're not going to get back a premium asset with Kuznetsov unless it's a pure hockey trade. Like, okay, we're going to trade of getting Kuznetsov from Mark Scheifele. Like that would be like the kind of trade that I would expect if we do trade Kuznetsov, just like a, you need a top six center back. And a guy that we think is going to just be more consistent. He might not be as good in terms of like actual talent as Kuznetsov, but he can, you know, he'll be there 82 games and then, you know, in the playoffs and we don't have to worry about his effort level. Mantha is interesting to me because like, obviously he's getting a lot of hate just because like, you know, he was supposed to be an offensive kind of stud for us and he hasn't really delivered there. But when you look at his underlying metrics, like his defensive play has been actually very good. So looking at a player like yeah he's been a bit underwhelming offensively he's getting you know 5.7 million dollars a year to score goals but he's been pretty effective defensively so you're looking at that like mantha has doesn't have zero value like i don't think he's a contract that you have to like pay immensely to get another team to take on he's probably a player that like if you traded him to a team like the coyotes for you know whatever it would probably be a pretty low return i would say but that would be a player perfect for a coyotes because they could you know turn around and sell him at the deadline if he has a resurgence there, just a change of scenery, wants to get back in the playoffs, that kind of thing. So uh, Kuznetsov and Mantha definitely wouldn't fly for like Toronto just because like the money aspect, right? Like unless they're completely breaking down their core four group of forwards, like there's no money there to really have that give or take of like, you know, nearly $7 million from Elander plus seven, um, what, 7.8 for Kuznetsov plus 5.7 for Mantha. Like that just, the math doesn't work out. 
Yeah, I thought that was kind of odd. And, you know, uh, it's no one wants to even entertain the idea of, you know, them trading Wilson. I don't want them to trade Wilson. But ultimately, if you're going to get a fish like that, I think if it was Kuznetsov and Mantha, let's just kind of remove the money from the situation. Uh, just talking about just a value in a player, I think it would almost, you'd have to sweeten the deal with like a McMichael um, or maybe the draft pick that they're getting number eight, something like that. Um, so I don't think, you know, that, I mean, I would be, if they want to trade Kuznetsov and Mantha for Nylander, okay, let's do that today. If you guys really want to do that, I think that, uh, you know, uh, they, that, that probably would not serve the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, real well. All right. I want to thank you for once again for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. And are you a fan of other DC sports? Well, Locked On has got you covered as we have Locked On Nationals, Locked On Commanders, and Locked On Wizards. So if you're a fan of any DC sports, we've got you covered. If you're following the Stanley Cup, make sure and follow Locked On NHL as they have a podcast five days a week on your podcatcher of choice and on YouTube, breaking down all the action with the Stanley Cup. Are you an everydayer of Locked On Capitals? I would love to hear from you. Hit me up on Twitter at DanCaps218 or at Locked On Caps and say, hey, Dan, I'm an everydayer of Locked On Capitals. I'll give you a shout out on Friday's show. All right. Once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.